Hey everyone, Mr. Tass here with the Mr. Tass 3D Print Shop. This is going to be the second of a series of videos I'm doing on the Creatality Laser Module that I was uh, sent. Um, this is the 10 watt model that I have, um, and I will also plan on doing a uh, production type video, and I've already done an unboxing video. So be curious to see what we can create. But to do that, we've got to get it installed first, and I just want to show you how easy it is to do. Before we get into that, let's talk about the unit itself real quick. So the module, the 10 watt module is listed for 200 currently. There is a 5 watt module for 129, and there's a 1.6 watt module for 99 currently on sale for 79. Basically, the higher the power, the thicker the material you can cut or the faster you can engrave and different things that way. But the module itself is great. It's designed to work with the Ender 3 series of printers and the CR10s. Um, and it's designed to be, you can switch back and forth with like a minute or two um, effort. So you can see here the models that are uh, compatible. So I'm using an S1 myself, um, but you can do engraving, you can cut different materials, um, has a control box, has this lovely little step level to make it easy to level it. Um, good to work with laser GRBL or Lightburn. Um, I have personally found that Lightburn is going to be worth the money, um, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, different materials some of the different products that are done. And in the box, we got the laser module, a bracket to hang it from, goggles, protect your eyes, a USB-C cable, a power cable, the SD card, um, the wrench, and different screws. So that's the unit itself. Let's get into getting it installed. So the first thing you need to get installed is you need the brains of the operation. And that is this box right here, the Creatality Falcon box. So it's got a slot for an SD card, USB-C and power, and a power switch over here. And it has three sets of cables. It has a Z cable, which goes to your laser printer. It has an X and a Y cable, which replace the ports back here. But the nice thing is, it's designed in a way that once you're connected, you can easily swap back to 3D printer mode without having to reach as deep and weird angle to change out these cables. So we'll get into that in a minute. Now I have already run my power and USB over to this box from the computer. So I've got the USB-C going in there, got the power going in there. I'm going to keep this box on the back end of my printer and you just need to make sure that your cables stay down and don't interfere with the bed itself. So I'm going to rotate this slightly so we can see and we're going to pull out the level and we're going to pull out the motor for the Y and then we are going to find the Y cable which is this one. And you can see it's got labels on it that say Y. And so we are going to plug this into here. And then we're going to plug this right into here, like that. So now when I want to switch this back to a 3D printer, I just unplug these two cables and I plug these two cables in and I don't have to change any of my settings that I had before, my levels, anything that way. It is easy to get back into 3D print mode. And I'm going to just stuff these cables down so they're out of the way and stay out of the way. So we'll tuck that one just under there. So that's that side. Now we need to go and set up our X. So I'm going to move this back to where it was. There we go. And so on our X, we also have our Z line. So we're going to just move this up here so you can see a little better. And so here we just need to unplug that one, unplug this one, come around the back side and just plug these in. Get those up there. And this one, there we go, right there. And again, I have these two cable lines, which I can just easily swap out if I want to go back to a normal 3D printer. So now I have the Z line left, and this I'm gonna just run up here and hold for a minute. Now we need to get our bracket installed. And we install the bracket so that we can get the printer installed. Is the bracket. And I have found that the easiest way to install this is you slide it at a bit of an angle here so it goes in at an angle and then down and in. Now you want to make sure that you put any cables here 
find it over so you can see the red cables over here. You want those to be in front of the bracket. And you just slide that over. And then it's got a little screw here on the bottom that you tighten. And that is what gives it stability. So I'm using my hand to hand tighten the bracket. And then it comes with a little adapter there. And so we're just going to put this right into there. Tighten it. Lock it down. Okay. That bracket is nice and secure. It's not going anywhere. Now we can install the laser itself. So here's the laser. And you can see it's got the port on the top for the Z. So I'm going to bring our Z cable up and over. I'm going to plug that in first. Makes it easier. And then this slides onto this bracket. And you use these little thumb screws just to tighten it in place to start with. Like so. And then it has a magnetic underside protection there. So this is now pretty much installed. Um, now what you can do is if you want to leave your Z line up there so that it's always accessible to the printer, give it a little slack in case you slide it down. It comes with these little Velcros that you can put around just to help keep the Z cable in line and out of the way for permanent. So there we go. So I'm just going to put those two on it for now. Now I did add, I purchased a third party um, air tray. So this is designed to let the laser pass through and not have as much smoke and so your prints don't come out quite as dark or burnt edges. Um, and so before you level this, you need to take into account putting whatever you're going to put under and also whatever material you're going to put under. So if we put this under here, now we want to level. And so if I was cutting this wood, basswood plate, I would use the little layer here and it says engraving for one to three millimeter. This is two millimeter. I need the laser to sit at that height. So I drop that onto there, and then I retighten the thumb screws. And now my laser is at the level I need it to be able to print through this material. But what do we use to print with the material? So first I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just power on a little box. And you see it turns on. The software I'm going to use is called Lightburn. We're going to do this. I'm going to there we go. That did it. So you just open it and start. So you can see there it homed the device. Now if I load up a file, let's just say, so on the, um, the SD card that it provides, it comes with this file. If I click frame, it will tell me, show me the general frame outline for where it wants to print. So as you can see, I would need to adjust my material. To where I want it and let's just get a new plate here and so if I was to put that right there and then I would click frame and it will outline out do I have enough space on the material I'm printing with and in fact I could even go up a little bit more just to use less waste material And so with it being level, I can either change my settings, I could load a different file, or I can hit start, and this will start cutting and printing. And that's it. You're now laser cutting. Um, you can change, load different files, you can do laser engraving. Uh, we'll get into the software side more on the actual projects and use. But that's the installation. Um, you're good to go. And once you're laser engraving, you can print something like this. Well, you can cut. Something like this with the test files that it had. Um, and so you can see it's actually pretty clean because it went through here. Um, I did notice, though, creates a lot of smoke and made my whole upstairs smell like smoke. So be warned, you need proper ventilation. Um, I am actually have purchased now the um, Comcro cover for this, as well as, uh, well, the Creality cover. 
and a fan uh, exhaust system to try to capture the smoke and move it out of the way, which also will lead to better prints. But let's say we're done laser printing, and now we want to turn this back into a 3D printer. So we take our items off here. We take our laser printer off. Unplug. And then we take our bracket off. There we go. So there's our bracket. And then I just want to switch these two cables out. So this now plugs into here. And my original watch you plugs into here. Okay, do the same thing back here, unplug, unplug, plug in, that one, and then plug in, that one. Okay, so four plugs have been changed, one plug completely undone here, and so this Z1 I'm just going to tuck back in there and just leave it where it is. Now when I turn on the normal 3D printer, let me get rid of the LightView software here. So when I turn on the printer, my normal control panel is now accessible and I can now use my normal printer just the way it was before. So if I go to level, you can see it's working and it's ready to go. So that's it. That's the installation and the uninstallation to be able to use this great little device. Um, so we will dive into a project. I'm going to try to use some acrylics and some different things. Looking forward to just seeing what we can create. Um, stay safe. Be careful. Don't look at the laser. Um, and until the next video. Thanks.